Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to solve some practice problems on inverse functions. All right, so the first one is we need to find the inverse relation between x and y. So what we want to do is we want to create an equation based on the information that we're given here. We see that we start out with x is equal to 0, y is equal to 3, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 5, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 7. So we need to find a pattern here and it looks like when x is equal to 0, we're going to add 3. So I'm going to put 3 here as a plus 3. I'm going to put y is equal to uh, something plus 3. Now I see that when x is 1, y is equal to 5. So it could be just that when y, we just place the value of 1 for x, uh, I get 4 out, so that's not going to be it. If I say 2x, that might work. So let's, in these cases, you just kind of have to experiment with the values. First, you analyze what value you get off of zero, you know that it's going to be a constant value added or subtracted. And then for each input, um, you have to determine what the additional output is going to be. So it looks like we're adding two here for every change in x. So I change x one, I increase two, and that's the common change between the y values. So it looks like if I write the equation y is equal to two x plus three, that correctly uh, evaluates the current function that we have here between x and y. So 2x, we can just double check to make sure this is true. 2x uh, gives us 5. 2 times 2 plus 3 gives us 7. 2 times 3 plus 3 gives us 9. Okay, so we have the correct relation. Now we want to find the inverse function. And as we talked about in the prior lesson on inverse functions, all we do is we just substitute x for y. So now we have in y for x. x is equal now to 2y plus 3. And then I solve for y. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I have x minus 3 is equal to 2y. And then divide by 2, x minus 3 over 2 is equal to y. And this is the inverse relation uh, based on this particular rate relation that you're given in this question. All right, number two, find the equation for the inverse relation. So again, all we're going to do is we are going to substitute the values of x for y and y for x. So I rewrite the equation as uh, x is equal to y plus 1. And then I solve for y. y is equal to x minus 1. And in the second equation, y is equal to 5x. I rewrite as x is equal to 5y. I solve for y, and I get y is equal to x over 5. Okay, now we're going to use a horizontal line test to determine if the inverse of the function is a function. So here is the original function, and I want to determine if the inverse of this function is a function. So remember, if we determine just if this particular function is a function, we do the uh, vertical line test. If we want to find out if the function of this function, inverse of this function is a function, we're going to use a horizontal line test. So again, original function, we use the vertical line test. And then inverse of function, we use the horizontal line test. So I can say that the original function is a function, but when I draw a horizontal line, I see it passes through two points in the graph. So I know the inverse of this function is not a function itself. All right, 12, verify that f and g are inverse functions. So remember, we're going to say f of g of x is equal to x, and g of f of x is going to be equal to x. So I have f of x is equal to x plus 2, and g of x is equal to x minus 2. Let's take f of g of x first. So I know x now is going to be equal to g of x, which is x minus 2. And I have f of x equal to x plus 2. So I'm going to take this value in and substitute it, this value for uh, x, x minus 2, which we got from this function g of x, and substitute it into x for the function f of x. And when I do that, I get x minus 2 plus 2, which is equal to x. So I see that f of g of x is equal to 0. All right, so now I'm going to find g of f of x. I'm going to erase this to give us some more room. I say g of f of x g of f of x, where I take x plus 2 is now equal to x, and I substitute that into g of x, which is x minus 2. So I take this value, and I substitute it in for x in g of x, and my result is 
uh, g of f of x is equal to x plus 2 minus 2, which is equal to x. So in this case, I can see that g of f of x and f of g of x are both equal to 0. So in fact, f and g are inverse functions in number 12. All right, so let's solve number 13. Our f of x and g of x in number 13 are those inverse functions. So we're going to go through the same process. We're going to find f of g of x and g of f of x. And we're going to find out if they both equal x. And if they both equal x, then we know that they're inverse functions. All right, so I take f of x, which is 3x. And now I'm going to use 1 3rd x as x. And I'm going to substitute that value back in for x. So I have f of g, f of, g of x is equal to 3 times 1 3rd x. And that gives me x. So I know f of g of x is equal to x. What about g of f of x? So again, I take g of x, which is 1 3rd x. That's g of x. Let me rewrite that so it's a little bit clearer. So g of x is equal to 1 3rd x. And I'm just getting this from the information that's given to me. And I take f of x as x, which is 3x. So I say 3x is now equal to x. And I substitute this value in for x. And I get 1 3rd times 3x. And that value is equal to x. So I see that f of g of x and g of f of x are both equal to x. So I can say that uh, both f of x and g of x are inverse functions.